Paul McCartney is best known for being a member of the Beatles. But when he's not busy taking over the world, the star enjoys spending time with his five kids. So who are Paul McCartney's children? How rich are Sir Paul McCartney's kids and what jobs do they do? Here is everything to know about the iconic Beatles singer's five children. Heather Louise McCartney, 61. Heather Louise McCartney, McCartney's eldest child, was born to Linda Eastman and her then-husband, Joseph Melville C. Jr., on December 31, 1962, in Tucson, Arizona. However, by the age of three, Heather's parents had parted ways. In 1967, Eastman crossed paths with the renowned musician and swiftly relocated with Heather to England to be with him. The couple exchanged vows on March 2, 1969, and McCartney formally adopted Heather around the same period. Following in the footsteps of her creative parents, Heather pursued a career in the arts. She delved into the world of printing at the Photographer's Workshop in Covent Garden, London, where she later earned recognition by winning the Young Black and White Printer of the Year Award. Expanding her horizons, she went on to study pottery and design in college, eventually establishing herself as a skilled potter. In 1999, McCartney made a trip to Atlanta to show his support for the launch of Heather's brand, marking his first public appearance in the United States since Eastman's passing the previous year. Speaking to Entertainment Tonight, he expressed his joy at being present, saying, I'm happy to be here. She's a lovely girl, and I'm very proud of her. When asked by the outlet about her biggest inspirations, Heather responded, My mom and dad. My brother and sisters completely. Apart from her appearances in the documentaries The Beatles, Get Back and Let It Be when she was younger, Heather has mostly chosen to keep a low profile. Consequently, there's limited information available about her personal life. In this photo from 1969, she's pictured with her parents, Paul and Linda. Today, Heather is estimated to be worth between $1 million and $2 million, so let's take a closer look at how she's amassed her respectable fortune. Heather found herself unexpectedly in the limelight after her mother married McCartney in 1969. While there was speculation that she might pursue a musical career like her famous father, Heather opted to forge her own path and enrolled in art school, where she specialized in pottery and ceramics. Today, Heather is celebrated as a talented potter and designer, with her work showcased in exhibitions globally, from New York to Tokyo, Paris, and Sydney. In 1999, she launched her own line of homeware products, the Heather McCartney Houseware Collection. Mary Anna McCartney, 54. McCartney and Eastman welcomed their first child together, Mary Anna McCartney, into the world on August 28, 1969, right around the time the Beatles were disbanding. Following in her mother's footsteps, Mary pursued a career in photography. She credits her early fascination with the art form to her mother, who introduced her to photography in their Soho darkroom. My mom took me to her darkroom in Soho and printed a little 10 by 8 inch image herself, and it was just me and her, Mary reminisced. She took the small piece of blank white paper and put it into the tray and then waved it from side to side, and I saw this black and white image magically appear. As a child, the impact of that magic in that moment really went into my heart. Mary's photography has been exhibited in galleries worldwide and featured in esteemed publications such as GQ, Vogue, and the Sunday Times. Notably, in 2015, she was chosen to photograph Queen Elizabeth to commemorate her historic reign. It was a thrill to meet her and a very great privilege to take her photo on this historic occasion, Mary shared with people in a statement. She is a truly inspirational person, a trailblazer, and a beacon for womankind. In 2020, Mary had the opportunity to photograph two other major stars, her father and Taylor Swift, for the cover of Rolling Stone. During an interview with CBS This Morning, Mary recounted how she became her dad's photographer during the initial lockdown period. She mentioned, I kind of became dad's lockdown photographer during the first lockdown. I did the album cover for McCartney III. She expressed gratitude for her father's trust in her, recalling his sweet request. I'd love you to take the picture.
This experience held a special significance for Mary, as it marked a full-circle moment for her family. She shared on Instagram that her mom was the first female photographer to shoot a Rolling Stone cover back in 1968. Mary's photography collection, Moment of Affection, went on display at the Chateau Lacoste Gallery in France in 2022. The exhibition, which ran between June and September, featured over 20 pieces of work from her personal archive, all capturing rare moments of unguarded intimacy and connection. Beyond her photography endeavors, Mary is also a filmmaker. Mary recently got behind the camera to make her directorial debut for the 2022 Disney Plus documentary, If These Walls Could Sing, which chronicles the history of the Abbey Road recording studio. Many legendary artists have made music at the iconic studio over the years, including Pink Floyd, Radiohead, and, of course, The Beatles. Some of my earliest memories as a young child come from time spent at Abbey Road, Mary said in a statement about the documentary. I've long wanted to tell the story of this historic place. Mary is deeply committed to cooking and veganism. She has authored several vegan cookbooks, including the Meat-Free Monday Cookbook, co-written with her father and sister Stella, as well as Food, Vegetarian Home Cooking, At My Table, Vegetarian Feasts for Family and Friends, and Linda McCartney's Family Kitchen. In addition to her culinary ventures, Mary hosts her own show on the Food Network called Mary McCartney Serves It Up. Speaking with people about the series, Mary expressed her enjoyment of cooking for her father. She shared, McCartney really is so great to cook for because he really appreciates home cooking. He really loves someone cooking for him. In 2022, Mary's show received a nomination for Outstanding Culinary Series at the Daytime Emmy Awards. On a personal note, Mary was previously married to director and producer Alistair Donald from 1998 to 2007, with whom she shares two sons, Arthur and Elliot. She is currently married to filmmaker Simon Aboud, with whom she has two more sons, Sam and Sid. The rock and roll heiress is reportedly worth an impressive 15 million, 12.4 mil. So how does Mary spend her fortune? Previously, she resided in a luxurious five-bedroom, four-bathroom property located in the upscale St. John's Wood neighborhood of North London. For over a decade, Mary lived in this grade two listed house with her husband, film director Simon Aboud, and their four children. However, in 2018, she decided to put it on the market for $6 million, reducing the price to $5.3 million just a month later. Mary and Simon opted for an upgrade, moving to a larger house nearby. According to the Evening Standard, the family required more space as both Mary and Simon worked from home. Details about their new spacious residence remain undisclosed, but given the elegance of their former family home, it's safe to assume that their new abode is equally stylish. Stella Nina McCartney, 52. McCartney and Eastman welcomed their second daughter, Stella Nina McCartney, into the world on September 13, 1971, in London. Stella has carved out her own illustrious path and gained worldwide recognition as one of the most prominent fashion designers. She embarked on her design journey at the tender age of 12, as she revealed during an appearance on Good Morning America. I was very conscious of the attention on our family, and I wanted to establish my own identity, she remarked about her determination to make a mark for herself. At 16, Stella secured an internship with Christian Lacroix in Paris, as reported by Vogue. Subsequently, she pursued fashion studies at renowned institutions in London, including the esteemed Central St. Martins. Under the mentorship of Edward Sexton, Stella laid the foundation for her debut collection at Chloe. In 1997, Stella earned the prestigious title of creative director at Chloe at the remarkably young age of 26. Reflecting on this period during her January 2020 cover story for Vogue, she shared how her approach to work clashed with industry norms, resulting in significant resistance. Acknowledging her innovative contributions, Stella was honored as the VH1 Tuck Vogue Fashion Awards Designer of the Year in 2000. 
The following year, she departed from Chloe to establish her own eponymous label, a move catalyzed by her remarkable success in tripling sales at the renowned French luxury brand. Stella's brand, renowned for its strong commitment to sustainability and animal-friendly practices, has burgeoned into one of the fashion industry's most influential entities. Expanding beyond clothing, her brand now encompasses perfume, beauty products, and menswear. In her Vogue cover story, Stella emphasized her dedication to creating luxurious, desirable fashion that upholds sustainability principles, stating, I'm trying to create something that's still sexy and desirable and luxurious that isn't landfill. On August 30th, 2003, Stella tied the knot with Alice Dare Willis, the consultant she had enlisted to assist in the launch of her fashion line. Their wedding, kept secret, took place in Scotland. Since then, the couple has been blessed with four children, sons Miller and Beckett, and daughters Bailey and Riley. Describing the serendipitous beginning of their relationship, Willis shared with British Vogue in 2014, it was love across a breakfast table. We had a breakfast meeting, and we haven't really been apart since. I called her that afternoon. The year 2018 marked significant milestones for the entrepreneur. Apart from being entrusted with designing Meghan Markle's dress for her wedding reception after her marriage to Prince Harry, Stella reclaimed full ownership of her label from the conglomerate Caring, as reported by Fashion United. Additionally, she launched the Stella McCartney Cares Foundation, a charitable organization dedicated to raising awareness for both breast cancer and sustainability. That same year, she partnered with the United Nations on a sustainable fashion charter. She also announced a new charitable arm of her fashion label, Stella McCartney Cares Green, which is dedicated to promoting sustainability and protecting the environment. Stella McCartney and King Charles, then the Prince of Wales, are shown here at the 2021 COP26 Summit in Glasgow, Scotland. In December 2019, Stella made history as the first fashion designer to feature on the cover of Vogue magazine. Yet, her most notable accomplishment occurred in 2022 when she was appointed a commander of the Order of the British Empire, CBE, for her contributions to sustainability and fashion. In 2021, Stella introduced a limited edition Beatles capsule collection coinciding with the release of the Beatles documentary, Get Back. Reflecting on the significance of the Beatles in cultural history, she expressed on her website, the Beatles were the faces of a cultural movement for positive change that continues to shape the lives of millions around the world. I hope this capsule celebrates and communicates these ageless messages to a new generation. The subsequent year, Stella received recognition from the Queen for her contributions to fashion and sustainability. Today, her collections are sold in 77 countries around the world. In an interview with Time in August 2023, Stella discussed the influence of being the daughter of a former Beatle on her Hollywood career. As one of the first Nepo babies, I had the privilege of choice, she remarked. I'm very aware of how lucky I've been. Arguably the most famous of McCartney's offspring, Stella is worth an incredible $75 million, 59 dollars. How does Stella choose to utilize her wealth? It appears that a significant portion has been invested in real estate. Back in 2001, she acquired a striking grade two listed Georgian manor house in Worcestershire, central England for $2 million. This expansive estate boasted nine bedrooms and 277 acres of farmland, with Stella envisioning its transformation into an organic farm. In 2016, Stella added a picturesque oceanfront residence in the Hamptons, New York, to her property portfolio. This charming three-bedroom beach house came with a price tag of $1.3 million. However, in 2019, reports surfaced that Stella's neighbors expressed frustration as she erected a five-foot-high sea wall around the property to safeguard against erosion, inadvertently obstructing beach access. Apart from these luxurious abodes, Stella previously owned a three-bedroom house in West London, which she listed for $3 million in 2022. Currently, Stella resides with her husband, Alice Dare Willis, 
who serves as the chief creative officer at Adidas, and together they raise their four children. James Lewis McCartney, 46. Paul McCartney and Linda Eastman celebrated the arrival of their first son, James Lewis McCartney, in London on September 12, 1977. Following in his father's musical footsteps, James pursued a career in music, becoming a talented singer-songwriter and musician in his own right. He had the privilege of collaborating with his father on several projects, including Paul McCartney's solo albums Flaming Pie and Driving Rain. James contributed his skills on drums and guitar to various tracks and even co-wrote some of the songs. Stepping out on his own, James released his EP Available Light in 2010, followed by Close at Hand and the complete EP collection in 2011. His debut full-length album, Me, debuted on May 4, 2013, co-produced by none other than Paul McCartney himself. The album's eighth track, Thinking About Rock and Roll, featured backup vocals by the legendary former Beatle. In 2016, James unveiled his second album, The Blackberry Train, which was also co-produced by McCartney. During a 2013 interview on BBC Breakfast, James revealed that he didn't feel nervous about pursuing a music career despite the weight of his famous last name. I never really thought of it like that, he remarked. I thought I'm not going to be oppressed by certain things. I am just going to carry on and do my own thing. Outside of his music career, James keeps a relatively low profile and prefers not to divulge much about his personal life. He's reportedly worth a cool $20 million, 15.8 meters. What is the relationship between James and Paul McCartney? It appears that the father-son duo has patched things up since reports of a rift between them surfaced in the late 1990s and early 2000s. According to British media, James and Paul drifted apart when the Beatles legend started a relationship with his second wife, Heather, in 1999, just a year after the passing of James's mother, Linda, in 1998. It was a tough time. Dad was with Heather, and we didn't see eye to eye, James revealed to the Irish Mirror in 2013. I don't hold any ill will toward Heather now because she's stepsister Beatrice's mom, but back then... It was challenging for me. We grew apart significantly. It was a challenging period. It was a time of growth for me. I needed to find my own path, and I needed some time to process my mom's passing, he explained in the interview. According to the same source, James started rebuilding their bond when he learned about his father's health issues in 2007. Beatrice Millie McCartney, 20. McCartney's youngest daughter, Beatrice Millie McCartney, entered the world in London on October 28, 2003, born to McCartney and his then-wife, Heather Mills. The couple expressed their joy in a statement, calling her a little beauty and expressing their immense pride. During a 2016 interview with Oprah Winfrey, Mills affectionately referred to Beatrice as her miracle child, recounting her struggle with infertility after enduring two ectopic pregnancies and four miscarriages. McCartney and Mills parted ways in 2006 when Beatrice was merely three years old, finalizing their divorce in 2008. Beatrice largely remained shielded from the public eye during her upbringing, occasionally seen out with her father. Mills emphasized this privacy during her 2016 interview with Winfrey, stating, I'm very proud of the fact that I have kept her image completely protected. She's not mixing in celebrity lifestyle. She's not out in public places where the whole celebrity thing goes on. In a 2009 interview with The Telegraph, McCartney opened up about Beatrice's upbringing, highlighting its simplicity. My typical morning these days starts around 6.30 a.m. I make breakfast, get Beatrice up, dress her, and we watch some TV, he revealed. I don't have a nanny. I handle all the regular tasks myself. I take her to school, chat with the other moms, engage with the teacher, and then pick her up from school. Expressing his joy in spending time with his youngest, McCartney emphasized, I love every second of it, and surprisingly, I'm not tired at all. I genuinely enjoy it. Raising a young child is a thrill and an education. I'm a different dad now, but it's all good.
On Octa 9, 2011, during McCartney's wedding to Nancy Shevel, seven-year-old Beatrice took on the role of flower girl, gracefully walking down the aisle in a long dress, accompanied by a pink wool coat and a flower wreath adorning her hair. In a 2015 interview with The Guardian, Mills shared some insights into her daughter's personality. Beatrice says she's 99% me, she revealed. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. I think she has the best qualities of both of us. We're both very musical. I taught her to play the saxophone. Mills continued. She's an exceptional poet, which she obviously gets from her father. But I believe she embodies the best of both of us. Contrary to McCartney's fame, Mills noted that her daughter has no interest in the spotlight. Beatrice dislikes fame and the whole spotlight scene, she explained. She aspires to be a marine biologist, not a pop star. Paul McCartney on how relationship with his five kids has changed over time. Paul McCartney recently shared his thoughts on fatherhood in a blog post on his website. The 80-year-old father of five reflected on how his role as a dad has evolved now that his children are adults. When they were younger, I always aimed to offer them guidance whenever they needed it, McCartney wrote. But now that they're older, it's interesting to see how they guide me instead. As they've grown, they've become more independent, but I'm still here for them whenever they need advice or support, McCartney continued. That's the essence of being a dad, being there to help out. And now that they're older, we can also enjoy some fun times together, like having a drink and just enjoying each other's company. In addition to his role as a father, the legendary musician embraces the title of Grand Dude to eight grandchildren. He affectionately refers to them as chillers. McCartney has written two picture books, Hey Grand Dude and Grand Dude's Green Submarine, which celebrate the special bond between grandparents and grandchildren. Reflecting on the reception of Hey Grand Dude, McCartney expressed his joy, stating, I'm really happy with how Hey Grand Dude was received, as this was a very personal story for me, celebrating grand dudes everywhere and their relationships and adventures with their grandchildren. I love that it has become a book read to grandkids at bedtime all around the world. As we explore the lives of Paul McCartney's children, it's clear that each has carved their own unique path while also bearing the influence of their legendary father. From music to fashion, activism to filmmaking, they continue to make their mark on the world. What do you find most fascinating about the McCartney family legacy? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more captivating content about Paul McCartney and his remarkable family. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay tuned.